So normally I scream at the camera, right? I mean, I kind of have a rep for that here, uh, but I gotta be real with all of you. Uh, I'm feeling a sense of relief coursing through my body today. I feel about 10 pounds lighter. No, I didn't just go to the bathroom. The reason for that is because I'm getting rid of these Mass Effect withdrawals. For some reason, I've just been really itching. I say for some reason, I know why I love Mass Effect, but I've been really itching to talk Mass Effect, but there's been nothing. We just had this big blowout at the beginning of February, and then silence and that's okay i can be a patient man at times but lately i haven't felt so patient so i've scrounged up every single thing i can find from a brand new screenshot to scraps of details on boss fights and how they're changing in the mass effect legendary edition new details on a mass effect show or movie my oh my we have a lot to go over so let's get into it starting off with the game and then we'll shift into some of the movie and extra media stuff that's happening within mass effect so let's start off with boss battles i just I like, I am a man who over salivates, so I just went like boss battles. Maybe he didn't get caught on camera, but I think I give Sammy Sprinkler a run for his money sometimes. Anyway, let's talk boss battles in Mass Effect 1. So this was something that was hit or miss for a lot of people due to the design of the level itself and also the difficulty of the bosses. So Mass Effect Legendary Edition looks to do some tweaks to make that a little bit better, a little more user friendly without removing the fight having a challenge so let's read this article comes from game informer in mass effect one players battled out through hordes of asari commandos as they square off against a character named venezia she's liara's mother and she's a powerhouse making this fight against saren's ally intimidating what made this fight even more intimidating in the original version is the fact that the cover during this conflict didn't act like cover at all between the movable components and the non-interactive environment it was easy to feel overwhelmed when getting this boss down to her final damage phase. I'm going to be honest, when I think back to Mass Effect 1, when I played it, I want to say eight years ago now, it's been that long, so all this is going to be fresh to me. I don't recall struggling with a boss, but I'm sure famous last words, when I start doing my insanity difficulty playthrough, oh god, oh man, I, I just, I must be a masochist, honestly. There's one thing about Benezia, says Meek. I think that there is a very obvious example in Mass Effect 1 where they didn't quite know whether or not they wanted to make a cover shooter where the keyword was cover. So in Benezia's fight, if you remember, all of the pathways that circle around it, there was no cover. No cover at all. There was no place to add cover because the pathways were too skinny. And then you get to the corner and there would be cover. But there were all movable with biotics. So you couldn't really go anywhere and hunker down to create a sense of plan or strategy about how you wanted to complete that battle. When looking at the missed opportunities seen in this example of a fight, Meek added that one of the original level designers that worked on Mass Effect 1 helped figure out a way to expand those pathways and from there create the strategic cover players experienced in the following two games. Quote, with this, you can always guarantee that there's some amount of cover that you can go and hide behind and that was actually real, end quote, Meek says. Quote, it's the same exact layout, but everything is now double wide with a few added cover points, end quote. Quote. Walters added on a broader scale about boss fights that it was important that the team looked at the most painful boss encounters, so not all of them, even just the more challenging fights that may not have been quite boss level. Quote, what were the instances where people almost continuously struggled? In this case, we added more autosave, end quote, Walters says. So that you know, if you die, at least you know that you can come back a little more quickly. But then we also did things where a lot of Benezia's powers can't just ragdoll you as much the way that we spawn some of those enemies, but it's challenging in its own right still. All right, I mean, hey, music to my ears, because if there's one thing I hate in video games, it's getting ragdolled and then put on my ass and then I can't get up and then you get ragdolled again as someone who just played sonic unleashed i i will have nightmares about the amount of knockdowns in that game for the rest of my days sonic fans up your standards for the love of god anyway the reason i'm talking about that bioware actually made a, a sonic game so i swear this is all connected but anyway point being is that i like that they actually had someone who worked on the original mass effect help out with the boss layout Keeping original minds on the vision helps it where I'd say Bioware's new staff doesn't get too liberated with their creativity and absolutely dramatically change things about this remaster. I think preservation is as important as getting the game right because we want to be able to say, hey, 
Mass Effect is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Why is that? You can hand someone the collection and it is what you experience, not what you experience with dramatic shifts. So for me personally, I like that they brought in one of the original mines and they added little tweaks here, a wider hallway, more points of cover, but also more auto saves. Once again, your boy's doing an insanity playthrough on this channel. I am going to go ham from day one because I've never messed around with insanity mode. I'm probably going to hate my life for a couple of months. That's okay. I do it for you. But knowing that there's going to be more auto saves, that's great news for people like me who want to be absolutely, uh, <clears throat> for lack of better words, insane and go for it. So I'm cool with this, man. Thank you. I appreciate more auto saves. I'm certainly going to need them. Now, for some of you out there, this may not matter much because, you know, I don't really think of boss fights when I think Mass Effect. I think storytelling, loyalty missions, a broad galaxy, interesting alien races, but... You do think of Garrus Vicarian whenever I mention Mass Effect, don't you? And we got ourselves a brand new screenshot. You didn't know you needed Garrus in 4K until you saw it for your own self. And guess what? That's all we've got. That's it. It's just Garrus standing there in 4K. Honestly, probably their best promotional screenshot yet. I've never seen anything quite better than this. So, quite frankly, thank you. Thank you, Bioware. We needed this. I will say, I do hope they stop talking about some of this stuff that they're doing with the game and that they're adding with the game and they're changing with the game and start showing it because that will start to, I think, worry people. I personally believe the changes are subtle enough where nothing's going to be a dramatic shift, but we don't know how exactly that will be until we get our hands on the full product. Certainly when you look at something like Master Chief Collection, it's very much possible that, one, you know, a, a remaster can come out very buggy. Uh, the 13 remake, Oh my goodness. I mean, that was broken. So it's not all in the bag here just because we know what the story is going to be. We know that the gameplay has been pretty sound. They still have some stuff to prove. So hopefully we stop seeing talk and we start to see some walk. Okay, so for about the last week and a half, this is something that's been sent to me like every single day by multiple people. And I totally appreciate it. I'm just very shocked that folks wanted me to sit down and talk about this. The reason for it is because I'm a TV and movie moron. I'm going to be completely honest. I pretty much primarily watch anime. I might be the worst TV and movie critic of all time. One of my favorite movies ever is the Lego movie. I mean, do you really want to take TV and movie opinions from me? You do? Okay, great. Let's talk about Mass Effect, maybe getting a show or a movie. So Henry Cavill, is it Cavill? Cavill, Cavill, I think it's Cavill. See, this is what I mean, this is what I mean. Why do you want my opinion? I'm going to embarrass myself. I'm going to go with Cavill though, okay? Henry Cavill made a post on his Instagram account. The caption was, secret project or just a handful of paper with random words on it. Guess you'll have to wait and see. Happy hump day, all. Hashtag hump day, hashtag secrets. And in this photo here, it was a blurry script as Henry was getting prepared to do some type of shoot. Gamepressure.com was actually able to use a program to see what the text was on Henry's script. And as you'll see here, there are multiple key words like Cerberus, Reaper, Geth, Talizora. He is holding a script that is connected directly to the Mass Effect series, which is really exciting. Now, I remember before it came out, I had reasonable fears for the Witcher Netflix series. And even when it came out, I thought it was solid. It was pretty flawed in a lot of ways in its pacing and storytelling style and not really delivering to the viewer what time period was which, unless you had read some of the books or at least a little bit of them to get an idea of what was happening. You could have been left in the dark a bit, but Henry's performance as Geralt of Rivia was fantastic. I thought it was a phenomenal recreation and I did not expect to like it as much. And we all know Henry has really gained a lot of love in gaming, you know, for his pictures of him building a PC, his love for The Witcher so strongly that he got that role for The Witcher Netflix series. And now we're going to get a second season of that. And he once again did a phenomenal job. And now it looks like as a Mass Effect fan, he may be wiggling his way into that series, whether it's a show or a movie, who knows? But I imagine that we're going to see more of these. I said this when we started talking about the Fallout TV show. Remember that thing that was announced like 18 years ago, right? It feels like forever ago and it's really easy to forget about. But yeah, the Fallout show, when that was announced, I said, you got to start to expect more of this stuff. People are, are starting to get, based off what we saw with The Witcher, people are going to start to understand that hey, you can actually make games or game series have good, compelling shows or at least interesting. And especially when you saw how much The Witcher Netflix series 
boosted The Witcher 3 on Steam, game companies are realizing, hey, our products can benefit from this when they're lying dormant. We can continue to make money on all of these things. So yeah, you're going to see a lot more of this. Expect probably something for Dragon Age in pretty much every popular series out there known to men. But seeing Mass Effect getting one, I'm not going to get super excited yet because for me, like I said, I tend to watch anime which is why when cyberpunk announced their own anime i think it was like edge runners or something i was hyped for that i was like yo give me more of that because that's primarily what i watch so i mean for me uh, a new show sure i'll make time for it it's relevant to my channel and i know a lot of people are going to want my opinion on it and of course i want to see how another vision in the mass effects franchise is going to be handled what's actually interesting is gamepressure.com found out through their little investigation that it's a script or a preliminary draft for a film or TV series connected with this popular Bioware brand. This time, however, another member of the editorial staff was perceptive as he noticed that Cavill was probably reading a text copied from the English Wikipedia entry about Mass Effect 3. And so this to me really said that he's probably being briefed on it and I don't know when exactly in the timeline this could be set what if he's doing like mocap or something along those lines i don't know man i just the thing started rolling through my mind because now we know that new mass effect game uh that is actually taking place after mass effect 3. we don't know how far down the line based off what we saw with liara we assume it's very far down the timeline since she seems to have aged a bit but i gotta say that if henry is in the newest mass effect game even i mean that would be I mean, that's another thing. People saw what Keanu Reeves did for Cyberpunk. You, you bet your butt that there are people who sat through that game, even with how buggy it was, because Keanu's performance and his passion for the project really shined through. And so there is also that benefit there, perhaps. But that's all I've got for that. Let's move on to one final piece for Mass Effect, and that is vinyls. Your boy likes vinyls. I actually have a... Hold on, let me grab it. My girlfriend actually got this for me last year. It is a Nier Automata record, and it's got the Gestalt and Replicant um, uh, soundtracks on here. And I have a record player in the corner of my studio, which I use occasionally. I've also ordered a record for Persona 5 Royal, and I want to get this Mass Effect one. So let's go ahead and read the tweet, which says that final collection for LP box set presale begins March 4th. So right today, as I upload this video, presales have just gone live at spacelabb9.com. The massive collection features 85 tracks from critically acclaimed game trilogy, painstakingly curated by the Bioware sound team and specially mastered for vinyl. So yeah, I don't know if anyone's old fashioned like me. I, I adore listening to music this way. There's something about it uh, that really resonates with me. I don't know, I, I prefer it this way. Uh, of course, I am also a normal human being and use Spotify and all that cool stuff. But when I'm here, I don't like to blast it through the speakers. A record player, there's something about the scratches and the audio quality that just sits better with me. It's more calming and soothing. So this is probably something I'm going to be picking up. It's great for when I'm working. I love having it in the background. So I just wanted to put this on other people's radars because I'm starting to collect more. This is currently the only video game vinyl I own. I have a whole collection that was handed down for my grandma before she had passed that I value very much. And so uh, between those two, I just want to build more with my game collection. So I just wanted to show some of you that for those who cared, for all of you who are looking for game news, I know that may not be particularly relevant, but still wanted to share it nonetheless. So with that, that's all I've got for you on Mass Effect Legendary Edition, the show, as well as a vinyl record set. Not too bad. So let me know what you think of all of this in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons, all the members. Seriously, you guys are crushing it. We are pushing closer and closer to 400 patrons, and that belief in my projects really fuels me on something special I'm working on that I, I can't wait to one day share with all of you. So with that, I'll talk with all of you very soon. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.